Hey, Lisa, we'll get started with questions from Kent. Kent, go ahead. Hey, Lee, uh, first of all, how did it feel to get back out there? I know they were kind of limiting your minutes, but uh, I was wondering how you felt in your first action in eight games. And just can you take us through the last minute when you when you guys were able to kind of see a little way, particularly that last possession when you got the steal? It felt good. It was really fun. I, I just I love this team so much. It was nice to be on the court again and play basketball. Um, yeah, mentally, I mean, coming back in such a high pressure game, too, I was like, wow, this is OK. Like, this is to get the three seed. So I just tried to embrace that pressure and remember, like, I know how to play basketball. Um, that last minute, yeah, I got subbed back in the game. Um, What'd you ask me you to take me through the whole minute? Well, you got those two free throws and then yeah. the came out and you were able to get a steal. What, what did you see on that play? Um, actually, I almost overhelped off the corner, which they needed a three. So I quickly recovered after I was like, oh, help on the drive. But then um, tried to get back out to cloud. And that's where she tried to back cut and just try to, you know, have my hands out long. And I was able to get that steal and then throw it full court to AP. And then the free throws. Yeah, I mean, like. It's two free throws. This is what you practice all the time, constantly. Those are the moments you're going to face in a game five and a playoffs and a single elimination where, you know, you're up and a team is desperate and they're trying to beat you and you've got to knock down those free throws to extend the um, your lead in the game. So, um, I'm given, back. The, given the pressure of the game, I mean, they were playing for their season, really. They were playing for the playoffs and they gave you some pretty good shots there, but you were able to answer. What does that say about the team? And did it kind of give you guys a good taste of what the playoffs will be like? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've, I remember being back here. I, I wasn't playing at the end of the season in 2019, but being with this crowd that's just so loud. Someone was asking me at the end of the game if we could hear them, you know, calling down the shot clock. It's going to be that loud where the five of you on the court have to rely on each other, especially, you know, offensively when you're away from your bench at the end of the game and, you know, you can't always hear the staff. So uh, it's definitely a playoff atmosphere. Getting a chance to play a game like that is really clutch, especially going into a single elimination. And it just says, you know, our team weathered the storm. We, I think they were going on a run at the end of the second quarter and we were able to, you know, stifle that run and not go down five, you know, at halftime. Cause if we had fallen completely apart and then all of a sudden the second half looks different, they have a lot more momentum. So to be able to stop runs is what you have to do in the playoffs because teams are going to go on runs. Teams are too good in this league. And I think that showed a lot of resilience from our team. Danny, go ahead. Hey, Alicia, how are you? <coughs> Tired, Danny. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Uh, I was wondering, uh, you mentioned AP, um, could you talk a bit about uh, what she was able to do tonight and just, um, how, or today rather, uh, and just, uh, you know, what her ability to score on three levels brings to the team and uh, how it um, makes the offense more dynamic? Yeah, it's something we've been missing. It's it's amazing when you can just give her the ball and have her go make a play at times. Um, cause we don't, we didn't have that player for so much of the season and I haven't really got to play with her a lot. So when, you know, it's low shot clock and you don't have time to necessarily always run into a ball screen or run into an action to get a back cut, you can like give the ball to AP and she'll miraculously make something happen. Um, her ability to get to the rim and take contact. She's just that kind of gritty, relentless player, um, that brings a lot to us. And then she can finish at the rim. She can hit her pull up and then she can stretch the floor. Um, so it's hard to scout her. Some teams just start icing her um, to try and take her out of, you know, her ability to get to the rim. So it means a lot. And we're just a, such a balanced team. Um, it's really important because you're going to need, you know, everybody. You're going to need bench players. You're going to need a balanced attack when you get into playoffs. And especially when people just start to hyper focus on Sill and Fee and our ability to get into the paint. Jack, go and ahead. Then, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Danny. Yeah. Uh, and if, I was wondering if, uh, it's a little bit soon to be reflecting on the whole of the regular season, but um, yeah, just uh, obviously uh, from the moment you joined the links to uh, today, there's been a tremendous turnaround in terms of this team's fortunes. Um, can you talk just what it's been like to live through that on the team as a player? It's been awesome. Um, you know, a lot of times like at the point guard spot, I think it, the, what I've bring to the, the court and to the game you know, it doesn't always show up in the box score. It's kind of those intangibles. And I think it, it really showed when I came to the links, like what that ability to, you know, control the pace of the game, to just be that steady poise player does. And like I said, it doesn't always show up in the stats. I've had a great year statistically too, but um, to see that show in value is kind of nice. You know, that's never how I've tried to pursue my career about like getting certain awards or people valuing it. I've tried to focus on myself, but it is nice to be like, Thank you. Like having a good point guard means a lot to a team. And so to see it valued in such a way um, is really important. And obviously 
without the people around me, like the pieces were already there. I think we just needed a little bit of glue. And that's where when you insert one more piece, um, all the, the puzzles really just came together. And so again, it isn't just my ability. If I didn't have the pieces around me, it wouldn't really matter. And so it's nice to just see it fit so well um, and to see how far we've come. Awesome, thanks, Leigh. Yeah. Jack, go ahead. Hey, Leigh, just heading into the playoffs where you know other teams are gonna try and take away what you're best at offensively. Um, and, and for you guys, that may be Sylvia Fowles down low. Um, so in a game tonight, she only has eight points, but you guys still find a way to score 83 points. Just what is your confidence level in, um, you know, in, in your teammates and yourself to, to be able to manufacture offense um, when other teams are taking away your best option? It's good. I think it's that, um... You know, we do have a balanced ability to score with, you know, K-Mac adding 10, me adding 10 first game back, AP's ability to score that we were missing, you know, in her long stretch when she was hurt. And then even the people who we've got off the bench who come in and we have actually better ball movement when our bench players come in than versus our starters. Um, so there's a lot of confidence. Still only took six shots. And like you said, we were scored, able to score in the 80s. So it's just, um, you know, having that balanced attack, I think it really means a lot. And then we have like one of the best fucking coaches in the game of basketball who has the ability to make adjustments. And that's something when you get into the playoffs that you have to be able to do at halftime, you have to be able to do in the game. And I don't know, you know, if Cheryl, if there's anyone better than Cheryl Reed. Um, and then today was essentially a playoff game. It was really emotional, especially early in the game. And you guys, well, there are two big, two big storms there in the second and fourth quarters. Um, ju just in terms of preparing for the playoffs, how, you know, how big it is getting <laughs> in today and being able to, to draw from, you know, from how you guys played today? It's huge. We got the ability to play, you know, a playoff game instead of playing, you know, maybe a team who had nothing to really lose and the energy's kind of bad and we're kind of grinding through it. Like this was, that was a single elimination game right there. That could have easily been Washington. They're a good enough team. They've had a ton of injuries this season. So we're really fortunate that we got that experience. Like it's, there's two, what, of 20 seconds on the clock. I've got to shoot two free throws to put us up four. Like you don't get any more close to playoff experience than that. And we were playing for the three seed, which is a big deal. So the pressure, the adrenaline, the moment was everything that it's going to be and more. And even in terms of the physicality that Washington brought to the game was a big deal. So, you know, really fortunate to get a game like that right before. And you never want to end the season on a loss going to the playoffs with that kind of bad taste in your mouth. So to have the resilience that we did and like a good taste in our mouth that we were able to do what we did with still having a, you know, a tough night and, you know, even Fee not having our best night statistically shooting wise, and we were still able to pull a win out like that with a test really desperate team that, you know, has some really good players. I think it's huge. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Leigh. Thanks. Oh. All right, everybody, have Nafisa with me. Hey, Fee, we'll get started with questions from Kent. Kent, go ahead. I would imagine this game had a bit of a playoff feel to it, given how desperate Washington was. Uh, they took some pretty big swings at you guys tonight, but you're able to kind of weather the storm. Just talk about what that gives you in terms of confidence entering the, in, entering the playoffs. It feels great because it was a tough game. Um, you know, Washington needed that to secure a playoff spot. So like you said, they came out really strong. And I was really happy with how we matched their energy and um, how we played on defense because we needed this game too. You know, we wanted to secure that three spot. Can you just talk about what might have been said at halftime? They, they had a huge run really in the second quarter to kind of get back in the game. And then you came out in the third and just kind of gave it right back to them. Did you make any adjustments at the, at the break? Um, yeah, I mean, it was more towards the end of the first half where they really went on a run. And so we stopped the bleeding at the end. So that was good. So we wanted to keep that up and make sure that they weren't feeding off of our offense. Danny, go ahead. Hey, Fee, how are you feeling? Good, thank you. Yeah, um, I was wondering if you could talk a bit about uh, what AP, AP brought tonight, uh, just in terms of her scoring on three levels and her energy. Yeah, her aggressiveness is always so great for us. Um, when she attacks, it really helps um, because once she's scoring and two, she passes it out, that means that shooters are open and we can make other plays. So uh, she's bringing a lot for us. Jack, go ahead. Hey, Fee, uh, I was just curious to get your thoughts um, just with the way that you and Syl were able to kind of collapse the defense inside and kind of get, you know, the other three players going. Just how, how confident do you feel in, in you and Fee to be able to consistently, you know, throw looks at, at opposing defenses that, that makes it not only tough to defend you two, but also makes it difficult to defend the other three players that are on the floor? 
Yeah. I mean, that's our job is to uh, be able to do that and not only create plays for ourselves, but for our teammates. And we knew coming in that they were going to um, really crowd the paint because that's what they've done the past two times we've played them. So, uh, you know, we came in knowing that if we get it in, they're crowding, we need to hit it out for shooters or go to work earlier or whatever it is. Um, so, yeah, we just want to do whatever we can to help the offense flow. Thank you. We'll go last question to Leo. Leo, go ahead. If he, uh, so you've been going pretty nonstop since, you know, um, overseas, playing overseas and then straight through this season and then the Olympics and then back. And so now that you have a week off, you know, what does that mean for you to, you know, get, it's not that long of a break, but having a week off, what does that mean for you? Uh, it's going to be great. I think a lot of people, obviously myself included, have aches and pains. It's the end of the season, so everyone kind of feels that way. So it'll be really nice to kind of get that stuff cleaned up and then also prepare ourselves for playoffs. Um, so I'm really excited for us to, you know, get that rest, but then get back into it and um, get ready for our next run. Great. Thank you, Fee. Thank you. Hey, Coach, we'll get started with questions from Kent. Kent, go ahead. Hey, uh, you guys were playing a team that was desperate, and they kind of came at you a few times, but you were able to answer in each in each case, especially in the third quarter and down the stretch after they cut it. I mean, is this the kind of game that you like heading into the playoffs just because of the experience it gives you under a pressure situation like that? Yeah, that's what we talked about. I, I thought this was, um, you know, we, we knew how hard it was going to be. You know, anytime you're – you know, trying to end a team's season, uh, be it, you know, to, for, to make the playoffs or when you get to playoffs um, to win a series, thought it would be great experience for us to, to have to go through something that difficult. Uh, I thought the, the key to the game was uh, the end of the second quarter where we were able to, you know, kind of regain control a little bit where, where maybe the first time we were here in, in Washington, when they, when they punched us, we just didn't we just could never get our feet again. And, and I thought we did that at the end of the second quarter and we didn't let, you know, a lead kind of uh, grow. We kind of kept it. And I thought that actually gave us, um, you know, the right mindset. We knew what we had to get done. Halftime was really good for us. Obviously we really needed it. Uh, and, and we just sort of locked in on, you know, we had to be better offensively. You know, we, we were, you know, they, they were very aggressive on us. And, you know, um, this is a game where we talked about, AP is somebody who can handle being pressured and, and still get in there and, and create opportunities, get fouled, uh, make tough shots. Obviously AP did that for us all night long. Um, but yeah, that was, it was exactly, you know, he always, I don't know of a coach that doesn't want games to be easier, but, uh, but they're just not. And that's what we said at halftime. Nobody said it was going to be easy. Uh, and so I just loved how we kept our head. I love the leadership on this team. I love that, you know, our best players weren't playing great. Um, I loved the way that, you know, the interactions, you know, the conversations that they were having amongst themselves. And I loved how we came out of the locker room. Uh, and then we knew because the same thing happened in the first part of the game where, you know, we got separation and we had, you know, double figure lead, whatever. And then we let them get back in it. Uh, but I think that experience helped us in the second half that we, we knew that they had multiple runs left in them. Uh, and we knew what we had to get done defensively. Um, you know, I, I thought our pace was considerably better in the second half, uh, Washington had 15 deflections by our count at halftime. Um, and they had just six in the second half. And I thought that was because our pace was considerably better. Um, they, out, they out rebounded you 17-16 um, and outscored you in the paint 24-10 and 10 in the first yeah. half. You kind of flipped that in the second. You outscored them 24-10 to 10 while out rebounding them 22-12. to 12. Was that a, a focus of what you were talking about in, 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 the, yeah. in the locker room? Yeah, it was. And, and those points in the paint didn't come off their offense. It wasn't, it wasn't that. It was uh, second chance points, which they had nine. So it was Tina. Um, she had, I think, three offensive rebounds. It was fast break points off of our terrible offense. Uh, so we knew that if we could kind of clean up that part, you know, the hustle plays, uh, with Tina, you know, make things more difficult. Um, you know, I, you know, positionally, we, we were a little too far underneath the basket. You know, she she's somebody that's done that for a living. You know, in, on the O boards, um, you know, we thought that was critical to, to clean up. And and I just again, I thought that if we could get stops and and play with some flow, uh, we we, we kind of tweaked what we were running a little bit just to you know not have very many passes. Let's just kind of move it. You know, if you're pressured, try to attack the basket. Um, Washington Washington played well. Um, you know, it's a hard game for them to lose because they, they gave us uh, a level of physicality and desperation that, that, you know, that I know that they would be proud of. And, 
Um, so for us to win that game in those conditions, um, you know, we, we got the separation at the foul line that we were hoping to, which means we responded with some toughness. Um, and so, yeah, just thrilled, thrilled with our team to get the win and, and to finish with the, with the overall uh, third seed, which we really wanted. Um, last couple, um, just really quickly. I mean, power is again showing that when you are getting pressured hard by a team that she's able to kind of create things on her own, like you said, and, and, and second, how did Clarendon look to you in her, in, in the first game back in eight games and boy, just clutch plays at the, at the end for it. Yeah. Um, Lay was a part of a critical stretch. One, I, as I told Crystal, I thought Crystal played great. So I don't mean to comment on Lay without commenting on Crystal. Crystal continues to play well. Um, but, but Lay's just minutes, you know, the, the 15, uh, 35 that they played very, very productive and, um, you know, just did simple things that, that you hope for. Uh, she found six assists and, and, you know, is always in there defensively with some physicality and, uh, you know, with, with an, with an energy and an effort that, you know, is, is really helpful to the group. And, uh, and then, and then Lay's ability to, uh, you know, get fouled a little bit, made a couple shots. Uh, it just was just really helpful. And, and I can't think of a, a better 15 minutes that I, I might've expected from them uh, in, in their first game back. And I kind of like the stakes of the game. because I think that that made Lay kind of focus more on what the heck she was doing and not, not focused on uh, maybe how the, the the leg was feeling. So that's one way to do it. You know, the stakes are pretty high and you don't have time to think about it. And powers. Yeah. AP. I mean, like I said, I said it, um, you know, she, she got a lot of shots, uh, was efficient, uh, made, you know, made threes and um, yeah. I mean, just you know, all around game from a scoring standpoint, uh, we certainly have places we can go uh, with AP to, to be even better. Uh, but, no question player of the game uh, by a long shot in terms of, you know, you got to be able to do both. You can't just get stops and, and AP, you know, was incredibly helpful to us on the offensive side of it. We'll go to Danny next. Danny, go ahead. Hey, Cheryl. Uh, I know it's a bit soon to be talking about the regular season as a whole, but. Um, no, it's a good time because it's over. Yeah, exactly. It's just that <laughs> fresh. Um, yeah, I was wondering if you could talk just a bit about uh, the ups and downs uh, since June and just, uh, you know, the way that the team has drawn upon uh, resilience uh, throughout the season. Yeah, I'd, I'd really back it up to May. I mean, I, I don't think it was June. I think it was May. Um, you know, we talk about a training camp that, you know, we, we weren't healthy. We didn't have people here and we got off to the worst start um, that I can remember since 2010, I don't know what, you know, in terms of the historics of, of the links, uh, if 0 and 4 was ever part of anything. Um, and so, yeah, you know, you start that way and, and, you know, you're unclear on your identity. It took us a while, it took us a while to get there. And, and we talk about the Atlanta game in Atlanta where we were down, you know, darn near close to 20 again. Um, and, and just kind of, you know, it, it, that's probably when it started, you know, certainly, you know, Lay's arrival, um, you know, we, we've talked about that a ton. Um, and it was just, you know, it's been a resilient group, you know, AP missed so much time, uh, but worked her butt off to try to get back in this thing. We, we knew that AP could be such a factor for us and, you know, disappointed we lost Dantas, but now fees stepping in and, you know, I think Bridget's had such a solid season. So we just, you know, I thought Natalie's minutes, you know, are, again, that's another player that's growing in terms of, uh, how much they're helping us in, in minutes. I think initially it might've been hard, um, you know, for her to recognize eight or 10 minutes, how do I, you know, reach some level of productivity? Um, I, I think the last couple of games you've seen, um, you know, that, that she's, she's finding her way and getting more comfortable with our schemes. Um, so, you know, a lot more pulling teeth early in the season and we've settled in. And I, I think I mentioned this before, when I got back from Olympic break, the team that I came into, um, I couldn't have asked for anything better in terms of, um, it was the place that we were trying to get to before the break. Uh, and it happened organically, uh, which was the great belief in themselves, great belief in each other and uh, how hard we played because I wasn't always getting that in, in the, in the bigger or in the uh, beginning uh, part of the season. So uh, there was a lot more push and pull, you know, even amongst themselves a little bit. Uh, so trust, you know, it's all about trust. Anytime you have trust, I don't care what it is you're doing, you know, basketball or anything else, you know, you can achieve great things. And we finally got to that place, that post Olympics, that trust was there and it was real and we've kept it. And, and that's, that's why you know, we've been able to get through all this. 
We have time for two more quick ones. We'll go Jack and then Leo. Jack, go ahead. Hey, Cheryl, um, you said it off the rip with, with Sill and Fee not necessarily having their best games offensively, but I still thought that the way that they were able to pressure the defense and, and yeah. kind of open things up for others was really big today. Um, I, I was just curious, how pleased are you with the balance that your offense has shown, um, you know, just over, over the course of the last, you know, week here going into the playoffs? Yeah, it was necessary. I mean, as I told the team, this is what you're going to see in playoffs, you know, things that you got you know, in the regular season and in your identity, which is obviously a lot of sill and a lot of fee, um, you know, teams, you know, now they have a chance to really lock in on just you. Uh, and that's what Washington, they did a great job um, in terms of trying to take us out of stuff and, and, and their will, um, you know, to, to keep us from doing certain things uh, was really high. Uh, and so then you got to find other ways uh, to get things done. And, and uh, you know, fee and sill, I thought, continued to battle. And continue to be a threat, as I told Syl, whether we can get it to you or not, um, you, you know, her being on the floor and aggressively uh, seeking touches, you know, creates offense for our team, whether she ever catches the ball or not. Um, I thought Syl found other ways to impact the game, particularly on the glass uh, for offensive rebounds, you know, from her and, and fee. Those are possessions and they got us some very critical possessions. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, that's we need the balance. You know, there's just no way you get a three C without having you know, some level of balance to what you're doing. You, you can't be one dimensional in any way. And, and we're not. And, and you know, I like that this game, we were able to, to, to handle the level of physicality. And, and again, when we, when we saw that before uh, we didn't get to the foul line, you know, I thought that, that we handled those things well. So, so we, we've grown as a team and balance has been a big part of it. Thank you. Congrats. Thanks, Jack. Appreciate it. We'll go last question to Leo. Leo, go ahead. Hey coach, I just want to get your reaction to a quote that we just got from uh, Leja in the post game uh, when talking about, you know, adjustments to season. She said that, you know, we have the best fucking coach in the WNBA. Uh, and so you know, obviously you're very humble and you know, I know you're always focused on the task. What's your reaction to, to Leja's comment? You know, I think Lay is just trying to position themselves for free agency. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, you know, uh, late Lay is pretty easy, easy to please. And, and, uh, I think she's probably thinking about a payday come February. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Great, thank you, Coach. All right, Have see you guys. Good. Thank you. See you soon. Corey, what's up? What's up, AP? Congrats on the win. Uh, thank we'll you. Questions from Kent. Kent, go ahead. Curls looking great. Right. Yeah, real quick. Your best game of the year, scoring wise, back in the city where you used to play, was coming back here at an incentive for you, and, and how did it feel to have a game like that in front of your former home fans? Of course, you know, it was an incentive. I mean, you always want to come back to your your home uh, court or a place where you used to play and play well. Um, today was big, though, not only for me because I was playing my, my older team, but because where we are in the standings, we needed this game to get into third place. They needed it to get into a playoff, so you, you knew it was going to be a dog fight, you know? Danny, go ahead. Hey, P. Obviously, uh, as Ken said, uh, your best scoring game of the season. Just uh, what was working for you tonight? You came out of the gate uh, so energetic, so aggressive. So, uh, yeah, what, what kind of let you get into that scoring mindset? I think I'm always in that scoring mindset. I remember uh, talking to Rachel Bantam on the team today during uh, warm-ups. I'm like, man, was it weird when you went back to Connecticut? She's like, yeah, it was weird, but it felt like natural. It felt like, you know, I had played here before. The gym didn't feel new. And that's how I felt today. It kind of felt like, you know, like I was back in D.C. And I felt the rims and I, I just felt good in the arena. Um, I still have a lot of love for the fans here. So all that energy kind of helped me come out on fire. Jack, go ahead. Hey, AP, um, just with, with the defense really taking away what Sill and, and, and Fee are normally able to do, uh, yeah. it felt like it kind of opened things up for, for you and K-Mac yeah. and, and Lay and, and Crystal to make an impact. Just, just what are your thoughts on, on the team's offensive balance and, and kind of hitting your stride heading into the playoffs here? It's crazy. I really think we're a championship team. And, and to your point, we have the inside presence. And Fee and Seal, and then we have the outside presence. So, I mean, it's really hard when we have all of those going. It's like, who do you guard? You know, you try to double down on Seal, and she's looking out and passing it, kicking out to us, and we're knocking down shots. 
or um, vice versa. So we're a hard team to guard. And on the other end, I feel like we play defense pretty good. I mean, coach was on my butt a lot. So I was trying to get through screens today. <laughs> Thanks, AP. You're welcome. We'll, we'll go last question to Leo. Leo, go ahead. Hey, Ariel. So there's a couple uh, major uh, media outlets that pegged the Minnesota Lynx as low as number six going to the season, saying that, you know, they're probably the sixth best team. And so obviously finishing number three, you know, how do you feel about that? You know, how did that motivate you all at all? And obviously there's some more to go, but I just want to get your thoughts. I mean, put some respect on the name, you know what I mean? Coach, Coach Reeve knows what she's doing. Uh, you have to realize there's a lot of us coming in new to this team, new to the system, and we might have started off rough. Uh, I know myself, I started off rough, and then I had two injuries, but I never, I never, um, I never thought twice about what she was doing. I believed in it, you know, but I believed in it since the time I signed. I believed in it even when we were zero and four. It was just when were we going to do this? And right when we started to do this, you saw it. I mean, I think we went on a crazy streak right before the Olympic break that like nobody talks about. Um she was playing, like I said it before, she was playing chess, not checkers, when she got the, the team together. And we all bought in, and we we respect her, we respect each other, and we're giving to each other, and you can see it. And we all are progressing at the right time, you know, progressing at the right time of the year. Great. Thanks so much, AP. Have a safe trip home. All right. See y'all. Bye.